The way a function curves can be determined from its derivatives. Let's look at this by examining the function sine x from 0 to 2 pi. The first derivative of sine x starts out as positive, which makes sense because sine x is initially an increasing function. As x increases, the first derivative remains positive, but becomes smaller at each successive value of x until a critical point is reached at pi over 2. From 0 to pi over 2, the first derivative is always positive, but the change in the first derivative is negative as x increases. The second derivative of sine x is the rate of change of the first derivative, and so the second derivative is negative in this region. Beyond x equal pi over 2, the first derivative gets even smaller, becoming negative until finally at x equal pi, the derivative reaches its smallest value. For the region pi over 2 to pi, the first derivative is always negative, and the rate of change of the first derivative is also negative because, again, it decreases as x increases. This makes the second derivative negative in this region as well. So, for the entire interval from 0 to pi, the second derivative is negative. Functions are referred to as concave down on an interval if the second derivative is negative on that interval. The function sine x is therefore concave down from 0 to pi. Keep in mind that a negative second derivative means that the first derivative is decreasing on the interval, and so this is an equivalent way to identify a function as concave down. Geometrically, a region in which a function is concave down will have the straight line tangent to the function above the curve. As you can see, the tangent lines lie above the curve in this case. Roughly speaking, a curve is concave down on a region if you can't imagine it being able to hold water. The function sine x between pi and 2 pi behaves differently. In the first half of that interval, the first derivative begins at a negative value and increases to 0 at 3 pi over 2. The derivative is negative, but because it is increasing, the second derivative is positive. As x moves into the second half of the interval, the first derivative becomes positive and continues to increase. The second derivative, therefore, remains positive. Functions are referred to as concave up on an interval if the second derivative is positive on that interval. The function sine x is therefore concave up from pi to 2 pi. As before, saying that the second derivative is positive is the same as saying the first derivative increases as x increases. Geometrically, the straight line tangent to the curve will lie below the curve when the function is concave up. Roughly speaking, a function is concave up if you can imagine it holding water on an interval. Of course, it is always better to use the precise mathematical definition of concavity because it avoids any ambiguity. Let's look at the concavity of the function x cubed. For values of x less than 0, the first derivative is positive and decreasing toward 0 at the critical point. This means the second derivative is negative in this interval, making the curve concave down in that region. For values of x larger than 0, the first derivative is again positive, and it is increasing, making the second derivative positive. The curve is therefore concave up for x greater than 0. So what happens at the values of x where a function changes concavity either from concave down to up or concave up to down? We have seen two examples of this already. The concavity of the function sine x changes from concave down to concave up at x equals pi. For the function x cubed, the concavity goes from concave down at x less than 0 to concave up at values greater than 0. At 0, the concavity changes. These are called inflection points, values of x at which the concavity of a function changes. At both of these inflection points, the second derivative is 0, indicating that the function is neither concave up nor concave down at that point. This will always be true for an inflection point. If some point c is an inflection point, the second derivative at that point will be 0. While it is always true that the second derivative is 0 at an inflection point, finding a point with the second derivative equal to 0 does not imply the existence of an inflection point at that value of x. There are other reasons that the second derivative might be 0 at a point. Consequently, the only way to confirm that a point is an inflection point when you find a point at which the second derivative equals 0 is to check for a change in concavity from one side of the point to the other. Consider the example of the function x to the fourth power. The first and second derivatives are both 0 at x equals 0, but you would not want to assume that the point x equals 0 is an inflection point without further investigation. As the plot makes clear, the function is concave up to the left of 0 and concave up to the right of 0. The concavity does not change at x equals 0. Consequently, x equals 0 is not an inflection point, even though the second derivative is 0 there. The second derivative will always be 0 at an inflection point, but an inflection point is not required to exist if you find a point at which the second derivative is 0. To find an inflection point, you must investigate the concavity of a function on either side of a suspected inflection point.
One way to do this is to plot the function as we did here. Another way is to find points at which the second derivative is zero and then evaluate the second derivative on both sides of those points to be sure the concavity changes. If it does, you have found an inflection point. If it doesn't, well, you have not found an inflection point. And that's concavity and inflection points.